Well, my friends, my indoor garden is ready for action, so I'm going to kick off by starting some of my favorite chili and bell pepper seeds. Some I bought and others I've saved from the last year. I'm going to be using the Rockwell cubes as they're clean, uh, super easy to work with, and really effective. I'll take you step by step through the process here in just a moment. First, though, I quickly need to create a little nursery area in here. You know, a tray for my propagator and somewhere to hang my propagation light from. I'm using this fast fit plant tray stand with an additional light hanging kit. No tools, no fuss, everything just clips together. It's easy even for me. This particular kit has been designed to hold a 2x4 tray perfectly, more than enough room for my propagation needs. Uh, fast fit do 3x3, 4x4, and 4x8 kits too. Now my initial light source will be two 4 foot Spectralux T5 high output daylight fluorescent tubes housed in this Sun Systems Sunblaze 42 inch fixture. It only uses around 110 watts of power. That's around 2.6 kilowatt hours per day. Even running 24 seven, it's not gonna cost me much more than 30 cents a day to run. Okay, let's get started. I've chosen these Grodan AOK Rockwool starter plugs as my propagation media because they're ideal for seedlings and cuttings. So much quicker than filling dozens of tiny pots with media. Step one is to make a pre-soak solution for the starter plugs. I'm using a gallon of regular warm tap water and adding one mil per gallon of Flora Series. That's one mil of micro, one mil of grow, and one mil of bloom. This is a very mild nutrient solution and I just want a tiny, you know, little something waiting for my seeds when they pop. I'm also going to add some rapid start, a rooting enhancer, and then some dilute pH down. Uh, just add a mil uh, per gallon of the rapid start, stir well as we always do after we add anything. Don't forget to calibrate your pH meter regularly, ideally before each use. It only takes a couple of seconds. Just dip it in some calibration fluid like this and hit the calibration button. It's more or less the same for most brands. Now, let's check out the pH. Eight, yeah, no, that's way too high. I'll need to add dilute pH down until I hit my target of 5.5, as this is the ideal for nutrient accessibility. I've added about four teaspoons of concentrated pH down to this water. I'll add it slowly and stir it in at the same time with my pH meter. Uh, okay, looks like I'm around 5.4 and that'll do just fine. Pour a little storage solution into the pH meter cap. Remember kids, keep those pH probes wet. Okay, let's get these Rockwell plugs into the pre-soak solution. You just tear them off and let them sink down to the bottom. You should make sure that they're totally saturated. A good sign is that they've sunk to the bottom of the bucket. Rockwool sure sucks up a lot of water. It has the ability to retain plenty of air too, even when saturated, and this is one of the main reasons why Rockwool is such an awesome growing media for hydroponics. Uh, here's something else I'm in love with, Grodan's Grow Smart Trays. Now the Grow Smart Trays fit ideally into any regular size propagator and will help you create super vigorous seedlings and cuttings by keeping the plugs raised up a little so they don't set in the water at the bottom of the propagator. Uh, with the air able to get all around the plug, the roots of your seedlings or cuttings are air pruned and exploit all the growing media rather than sending out roots into the bottom of the tray. And there we have it. One tray full of plugs ready for seeds. Right, on to seeds. This one's actually called Joe's Long, but I got them from my buddy Keith. It produces record-breakingly long cayenne-style chilies. They're large enough to handle fairly easily. Just lay them in the hole in the AOK -okay plug. Don't plant them deep, just as seeds dip down. I like to use the end of my pipette to tuck over some extra Rockwell fibers on top so they're surrounded with moisture. At this point, I'm just labeling each column of seeds as I'm only going to pick the best seedlings for the next stage, whereupon I'll label each seedling individually. All right, propagator lid on. I use a min-max thermometer with a remote temperature sensor and put it inside the propagator. Chili seeds need warmth and moisture to germinate. I have two potential sources, my T5 fluorescent light above and the heat mat that came with my super sprouter germination kit. Right now we're reading just below 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just under 27 degrees Celsius inside the germination dome. That 68% relative humidity measurement is my grow room, not the dome, as the sensor is on the meter itself, not the remote probe. That's just for sensing temperature. I guess it should be at least 90% relative humidity inside the dome, which is ideal for germination. It's important to monitor the temperature inside your propagator to ensure that your grow lights are not too close and causing it to overheat. The new high output T5s generate a fair amount of heat. Uh, check this out. Using this infrared thermometer, I can measure the T5 lamps are just under 55 degrees Celsius. 
that's 131 degrees Fahrenheit, so be careful. I recommend at least 4 to 6 inches distance, but it really depends on your grow room temperatures too. We've already risen up 3 degrees since I've been talking, and that's fine, but I don't want it any higher than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, I, I just might raise the light up a little. And here we are, 14 days after sowing. Uh, I guess some varieties take well, a little longer than others. So, okay, I'll be talking about transplanting and avoiding transplant shock soon, so make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to ask any questions below. Thanks for watching.